And in the run-up to the July 2019 presidential election in Mali, opposition chief Somaila Sisi has appointed presidential candidate for his party in front of thousands of his supporters in the stadium in the capital, Bamako. Sisi also launched his presidential bid during the event and warned against fraud in next year's polls. Joining us on TVC News are to discuss the politics in Mali is an African affairs analyst, Olushi Ademo. Many thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Now, what should uh, Malians be worried about? Fraud or violence? Or the inability of um, the elections to be conducted easily because of the issues in Mali? Um, I, I guess we've just touched on everything they should be worried about. <laughs> <laughs> because truth, truth is, um, unfortunately for us in Africa, um, all of these points are points that we all must worry, you know, uh, or be afraid of. Uh, mm. Because then we're not sure whether there'll be fraud um, in the electoral practices. We're not sure whether when uh, one is declared a winner, um, it will be allowed to come into office. Um, mm. Not only in Mali, across Africa. And it's unfortunate that even in 2018, this is still something that we need to deal with. But the truth of the matter is, I guess it's important when we're doing a campaigning like he has done uh, to warn the world and say, please look out for this touch point because they're likely to happen because then we've not, we've never had a situation where things are done in the right way. Elections in Mali has been repeatedly postponed since 2013 as a result of Islamist extremism, so to speak. And this challenge is not only peculiar to Mali, we have it even here in Nigeria. Uh, there are some who are saying that they're not even sure if this particular election will hold. Yeah. Uh, how do you expect Mali to deal with this? Um, the security concerns. Security concerns. Um, now, I think it's time for us to also start to call the attention of ECOWAS. I say to them, look, Beyond the things people are able to do within their country, let um, ECOWAS, mm. that is supposedly the regional body, start to step in even from the point of making sure that those who are going to conduct the election are truly credible people. Mm. I, I think that will help all of us rather than wait for things to fall out before we start to look for remedies mm. for it. I think pre-engagement uh, before election is also very critical at this point because then, like I said, it's unfortunate that even in 2018, we're still having to deal with this problem. Now, let's discuss the role of um, France in the elections in Mali. We, we know France has been very active in um, supporting the government to fight Islamists. Do you see France trying to install its own government in Mali? You know, natural resources in Africa. That's always that question of, are they sincere? Is the country sincere? And it's, quote unquote, love for Mali. I, I think we also need to be fair to the way we look at some of those things. As long as my interest is in certain areas, the truth of the matter is I will get involved in whatever happens there because then we're talking about investments, we're talking about things that would affect them if it goes wrong. Mm. In other words, there are serious and major investments in Mali and some of the other French supposedly um, colonized um, or formerly colonized areas. So they will naturally look out for those things. And let's remember that their central bank is being monitored as it were from France. And mm. so there's a serious interest of France in Mali. So f so, so when would this end? Mm. When would that, you know, that <laughs> struggle, the, the power France has over many of these African countries, when do you think this might ever end? Let me use a supplicit uh, narration until you're able to show your seniors that you're willing to hold your own and that you're willing to be able to, whether you're over 18 or not, is not sacrosanct that will allow you go and start running your life if we don't want you to kill yourself. So when you want to take hold of your future or destiny, then you'll show the rest of the world that you're truly mature. As it is right now, Africa generally have not shown the world that they're able to stand on their feet. So all of this involvement and all of these interventions or inter whatever name you want to call it will continue. Let it sounds know. much more like you used to require aid from, you know, foreign countries and you still look up to them. They still have a lot to do about how you run, you know, things at the home front. But there are some who would say that it is this foreign intervention that is responsible for the destabilization exactly. in the first place. Now, how do you react to that? 
I, I react to it in this way. If you say that someone gives you support, and that support will get you into trouble eventually, uh, it depends on the way you manage the support. Because for whatever is what any emerging business, any starter, we need a support, a back end that will propel the starter into maturity. So those aids are right for starters because we're still at the starting point as it were. The most important thing is how we manage it as a people. If we go to bed and expect that they'll continually feed us and continually support us, then they will go into the areas of our life that they ordinarily not, you know, they don't ought to get into but if we are able to get those aids and manage it very well and show maturity they will start to step back gradually america at some point was under the control of the british they grew into maturity and america took hold of their life the british had to step back and today in some way you can see america seemingly bigger than the british the truth mm. of the matter is a child can become bigger than his parents if the child shows maturity but if the child continues to be a child he will remain a child and be treated what then child. is responsible for these continuous dependence you on know the on the west truth of the matter is we've not had leaders who are truly um, in the know of what leadership really means in africa we need to face that uh, it's unfortunate that we're very very quick to ch choose the very best when it comes to sectors of our life but when it comes to leadership most often we don't always bring forth the best that will do the job predictions for, for mali we have um ibrahim keita rally for mali we have khalifa shinogo alliance for democracy in mali and we have others modibo kone what's your prediction they're yeah. all very qualified <laughs> now what's your prediction my prediction is let the best be mm, okay uh, without also uh, Somali Sisi mentioned um, the issues. These issues just seem to be the same across Africa. I'm quoting him now. Let us be vigilant. No cheating, no fraud, as in 2013. We will no longer accept that. So it's the same story of someone who wants to rule and who's been trying for years. And then you check his age. is about 68, 68. year yes. old. At what point are we going to have people like um, mm. Emmanuel Macron in France Only at 30, 38? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Rule in this part of the world. Um, when, like I said, I'll go back to that. When we have leaders who three understand what leadership is. True this. For me, leadership is not for old people because there is so much work. Because you're dealing with everything and you're so, so much under a lot of pressure that I would rather a young person do this job because then the pressure of office is so much too much for an old person mm -hmm. so a 68 year old person in my opinion is not the kind of person that should be running for office or be doing the work of the president of any country in the world well, i appreciate your time on the broadcast oluashi adeyemo thank you so much for your time thank you for having me thank you for coming